Welcome back to another mission of this Let's Play Adult May Cry 3. We're on mission 12. We just kicked Beowulf's ass. So now we just got a new item that we need to progress through this tower here. Let's see what happens. Even the devil boy is no match for it. <laughs> oh, whoa. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. You're not going to shoot me, are you? If you do, I'll die. You know, if that's what it takes to shut you up, it bugs the crap out of me when someone talks more than I do. Don't act so rashly, my boy. I've got a doozy of a story for you. But if you snuff out my voice like that, I won't be able to tell it now, will I? <laughs> I thought I was a goner for sure. <laughs> Oops. You saw it too, didn't you? That huge tower jutting out of the ground. That thick shaft that causes women to shudder. It's actually a tunnel, linking the demonic domain to the human world. And of course, your brother Virgil is the one who controls it by using your mommy's amulet. Amulet? He's headed to the control room in the basement. If you don't hop down there quick like a bunny, he'll open the gate to hell! Isn't that a scary thought? And you're telling me this because... Oops! I forgot to mention one teeny little item. <laughs> that gizmo there is actually the key to move forward. But the tricky thing is, it sucks the souls of those who hold it. So I think you better hurry! <laughs> In return for your soul, it'll give you power. Marvelous, isn't it? That troll's pretty Just easy to see. Your young spirit drive you and go for it! <laughs> Wish you would have told me that in the first place. You big mouth moron. Alright, a few adjustments to make to our setup before we head on out. Want to grab a blue orb, more health, better. Upgrade spiral, we use the damn thing enough. And I want to get rid of Baggy and Rudra. It's a very situational weapon. Cerberus is better for this kind of stuff anyways. Especially this mission. You'll see why. So we'll be stuck in Devil Trigger the entire time, basically. Until we get rid of this item here. It's going to be killing us slowly, of course, but all enemies drop green orbs, so it's not that bad. We'll be backtracking to the two bridges that we saw in the previous missions. Now for the majority of the time that we're in this double trigger mode, you're going to be stuck in Cerberus. Once you move faster and attack faster, so why not? The less time you spend with this double trigger BS, the better. And as I said, all enemies drop green orbs. So anytime you kill somebody, that's what they'll be doing. As you can see, we're getting more health from any enemy that we kill, which is obviously a good thing. Hell Wraths actually give you some of the most health out of all these guys here, so it's actually a good idea to kill them. 
especially considering they do damage to the enemies too, so why not? Keep your style points going and keep the pain coming. That's all that matters. Pretty easy. But of course we are stuck in double trigger since nice. Just avoid that green orb down there. There is absolutely no point in getting that. By the time you run up and get the green orb, you'll have lost as much health as you would have lost. This room is a little bit more annoying. It's not a confined area, but what you can do is shove all the enemies into corners and just make it into a confined area. That makes using Stinger a lot more useful. And you'll be needing to use Stinger, considering all the enemies just come fucking flying around from every direction. Not to mention all your combos knock them back so easily because they're a bunch of fucking wussies. And as I said, Cerberus is a very useful weapon in any of these missions, or any of this part of this mission. The quicker we kill enemies, the better. Alright, we're out of here. Switch to Cerberus as soon as everything's dead, and just run. We'll be dealing with blood goils for the next two rooms, and quite frankly, they're just not worth the trouble. Shit, of course I dropped down here. I may actually have to start dealing with these guys. Alright, next room and the last room is a Hell Vanguard, along with a whole bunch of other motherfuckers. Focus on the Hell Vanguard for a little bit, do as much damage as you can, and avoid his attacks, get health. Your best bet at this part is killing the Hell Vanguard, because he gives you so much fucking health, and then you can just clean up everybody else. So again, just focus on him, and take the small prize. And there we go. Okay, not too bad. Just eject this shit right out of your goddamn chest right here. And voila! Alright, we are done with the double trigger bullshit. On to the next part of the mission, which is the boss fights. <coughs> Now, I could go in here and fight Jester again, but I don't care. It's gonna waste time, it's a pain in the ass, and it's just not worth it. Any stretch of the imagination. 
It's not even an interesting fight, it's the same thing as last time. But here, we have the real fight. It's kind of funny how all of a sudden all the enemies just disappear. And this motherfucker comes out of nowhere. <laughs> Talk about horsepower. A chicken race with a horse, huh? Fair enough. All right, meet Gary on the time steed. This guy's a little interesting. But I'm just gonna shove myself in this corner over here and shoot him. I'm being a little cautious here. You can down him right in front of you, which will make things a little annoying. Otherwise, he's just out of your range completely, and it's super easy to just cancel out all your shots with spiral and everything. Get a lot of style points, and it makes this part of the fight quite easy. As you can see. First chicken, now gladiator. This just keeps getting better and better. Too bad there's nobody here to enjoy the show! Alright, beat the fight here, baby. So, Gary, generally based around a lot of these time based attacks, but using this time warp ability to slow us down and keep him at the same speed. There are a few different strategies to fight this guy here, and I'll show you how to use them in a bit. I hate how he has that little blue flame there. Actually, still manages to hurt you somehow. Now, the idea here is we want to down him. He's going to automatically use this time warp ability right there. And I can actually knock him down again if I just hit him in the right place. And if I miss, that happens. So, it can be tough a little bit. back to Rebellion so I can avoid him. Yeah. Alright, there we go. Anyways, so this is basically how the fight's going to be working for the most part. What I can do, I'll try to knock him down. It's not quite that easy with Rebellion though, unfortunately. You can actually ride on the back of him like that, but uh, it's dangerous as shit. The missiles will hit you and eventually they'll just throw you right off. Of course I can just totally miss him too. <laughs> that shit even fucking barely nicked me. And as I said, a lot of these time warp things is one of his main points of attack here, amongst other things. And I don't even understand how that didn't knock him down. Now, once we start getting later, his little time warp things make those little arrows appear there, which is quite annoying, to be quite honest. Uh, honestly, though, if you're in the air and just drop down, they'll never hit you. I don't know how 
that hit me. And we just gotta keep up the pressure on him, honestly. Oddly enough, this fight's actually easier in Dante Must Die mode, which is the hardest mode, technically, in the game. When compared to any other fight mode, uh, difficulty that is. The reason being is pattern actually becomes completely different. And actually, his, his pattern in Dante Must Die is actually just uh, far simpler to deal with than any of the other difficulties. It's kind of a strange design decision, but whatever. We have to deal with a more difficult version of Carry On here. Eventually, at this point in the fight, you can just shoot him. He'll die. Now, Garion's the first enemy that we kill that gives us actually a new style. This isn't just a power or a weapon. It's actually a completely different style. You just switch out of Swordmaster or Gunslinger or whatever you're using and switch to Quicksilver. It's only one level of it, but it's pretty darn useful. Um, for the most part, I'm not going to be using it, so you won't really get to see it that much, but it's interesting. It gives you Garion's Time Warp powers, which lets you slow down time while you, yourself, continue to be at the same speed. Kinda cool. Anyways, that wasn't the most graceful Garion fight I've ever done, but it'll do.
Oh, Beowulf ended up on the wrong side of the sword there. Too bad for him. Anyways, if you notice the damage uh, requirements of this mission are actually really high, so it's actually not that big of a deal that you get hurt so much. Anyways, that is it for mission 12. Mission 13 is my personal favorite mission in the entire game with my favorite boss fight. I love it. It's going to be great. Join me for that, and uh, it'll be fun. See you then.